next presenter is uh, Dr. Man Mamoru Tobisu. The title of his talk is Catalytic Transformations of Strong Sigma Bonds, Recent Findings. Please. So good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Mamoru Tobisu from Osaka University. And uh, first of all, uh, let me thank uh, Yamamoto Sensei and uh, Suzuki Sensei for initiating uh, this uh, important project. And it's truly a great honor for me to participate in this uh, memorial event uh, as one of the uh, speakers. And the title of my talk today is completely same as that used for my application to MBLA in 2012. And this is not because I was too lazy for these two years to change the title, but because I believe this is one of the central issues for organic chemists. Mm. So in the past, chemical reactions depended heavily on the transformations of these reactive chemical bonds, such as carbon-halogen bonds. And this dependence significantly limited the diversity of chemical transformations. And over the last two decades, CH bond activation reactions have appeared and are now a major field in synthetic organic chemistry. And of course, there is no doubt that CH bond activation is an important subject. However, to truly diversify the synthetic methodologies, we need to turn our attention to other unreactive bonds, uh, such as uh, CO, CC, or c heteroatom bonds as well. And this is what our research group has focused on. So this is the summary slide that I used for my interview for MBLA in 2012. And I discussed three different topics there. The first one uh, was, uh, sorry, uh, the first one uh, was a nickel catalyzed cross coupling using anisoles and uh, allyl fluorides. And then I also discussed the activation of a carbon carbon bond, sorry, a carbon carbon bond of nitriles uh, using a rhodium based catalyst that have a silicon or boron based ligands. And finally, I also discussed the catalytic synthesis of silos uh, through the cleavage. Uh, of carbon silicon bonds. So first, let me quickly overview our recent findings around the three topics. So uh, our nickel catalysis project has been expanded to the activation of even stronger carbon nitrogen bonds. And as you know, the, to cleave the carbon nitrogen bond of aniline derivatives, it is normally required to convert the amino group into beta leaving groups such as uh, diazonium or ammonium salts. And electronically neutral aniline substrates can also be activated, but in this case, an ortho directing group is essential. And what we found is the activation of simple neutral aniline derivatives. So the reaction of aromatic amide uh, with a diboron reagent under these nickel catalyzed conditions leads to the formation of the corresponding borated product. And under these conditions, you can borate uh, some aromatic amides uh, through the cleavage of these uh, strong carbon nitrogen bonds. And regarding our nitrile activation project, uh, we learned from mechanistic studies that the unique polarity of the borate rhodium species shown here is the key to success. So uh, the uh, boron center, boron center uh, behaves as a Lewis acid to activate a cyan group electrophilically. And at the same time, nucleophilic rhodium attacks the cyan carbon, setting the stage for the CC bond activation uh, event. And this push-pull activation strategy uh, was also found to be applicable to the boration of some other unreactive uh, substrates. So for example, uh, this aromatic PVLs uh, can also be borated under these rhodium catalyzed conditions. And the key here is the formation of this cyclic transition state in which similar push-pull uh, interaction is involved as shown here. And also uh, the uh, PDU ethers uh, underwent uh, this boration in a similar manner. And this reaction is also uh, synthetically useful since this boration allows a periodic group to serve as a convertible uh, directing group in CH bond activation reactions. 
Okay, so here is the current situation of our heated wall project. And this project was started by our serendipitous finding of the catalytic synthesis of silos shown here. Oh, sorry. And uh, the striking feature of this reaction is it proceeds through the cleavage of carbon silicon bonds. And uh, during the past two years, we have been trying to expand the scope of this reaction to uh, the synthesis of other heterocycles. And of course, this is not an easy task because all elements have different properties and therefore requiring different strategies. Nevertheless, our approach uh, using carbon heteroatom bond activation has now covered silicon to selenium. So for example, in the case of Hosplus, the desired transformation could be realized by simply heating this by allylhosphenes in the presence of a palladium-2 catalyst, and the cyclization proceeds through uh, the activation of carbon-hydrogen bonds and carbon phosphorus bonds. So, several projects are now in progress in our group, but today I'd like to focus on one of our long-term projects, the activation of NSOs. So our interest in this field was stimulated by a report of Wenkert, who demonstrated uh, nickel catalyzed cross coupling of methoxyarenes with Grignard reagent as early as 1979. And these results immediately led us to think up about the application to uh, cross couplings using other nucleophiles, since we all know the history of palladium catalyzed cross coupling reactions. However, to our surprise, this reaction has been used only with Grignard reagents and has never been applied to other cross-coupling processes since it was first reported in 1979. And in 2008, which was almost 30 years later from Wenkert, we reported the first application of the Wenkert reaction to organoboron cross-couplings. And unlike the Grignard cross-coupling, several electrophilic functionalities, uh, such as esters, uh, can survive under these conditions. And since then, the methoxy cross-coupling has been expanded uh, to the reactions using some other nucleophiles, such as amines or hydrosilanes. Uh, despite these advances, uh, you can say that the progress of the methodology has been very slow when considering the accumulated knowledge of palladium catalysis is available to us. And one reason for the slow development is the issue that we call the naphthalene problem. So here's a typical case. The methoxy naphthalene could be coupled with organoboron reagent uh, under, these, under the nickel catalyzed conditions without any problems. But in contrast, simple NSO is completely unreactive under these conditions. And this dramatic decrease in benzene derivative is not a common phenomenon in palladium catalysis. But if you take a close look at the literature, you will find that, that uh, the, uh, this is a very general problem in nickel catalysis. And the higher reactivity of polyaromatic substrates is probably because the formation of pi arene complexes shown here is more important in nickel catalysis, and its formation is much easier with polyaromatics since they can lose part of their aromaticities uh, much more easily. But in any events, the naphthalene problem needs to be solved first in order to make the methoxy cross coupling truly useful. And of course, we have already tried many things to solve the naphthalene problem in our initial studies. For example, examining a number of different ligands, Lewis acid additives, or a different metal catalysts. However, all the attempts were unsuccessful. And after several years, we happened to realize that we did not examine a certain class of NHCs bearing alkyl substituents. So we decided to examine them and found that a cyclohexyl substitute NHC is exceptionally effective for this methoxy cross coupling reactions. And as you can see, even a small change in the ligand structure leads to a complete loss of catalytic activity which highlights the difficulty in identifying an appropriate ligand for methoxy cross coupling processes. So let me show you how powerful the ICY ligand actually performs. 
So all of these NSO substrates are completely unreactive under our original conditions using PCY3. But in contrast, you can emulate all of them uh, by switching the ligand to ICY. So benzene derivatives can now react well, and electron-rich substrates can also be aerated successfully. And we had much trouble with nitrogen heterocycles with our original catalyst, but this limitation was also overcome by using ICY, which allows for the structural elaboration of some complicated molecules such as this. So we have made some significant progress in the aeration method for NSO derivatives. However, uh, the introduction of sp3 or sp hybridized carbon nucleophile still remains almost untouched. In particular, the Sonogashira cross coupling has never been available for NSO substrates. And uh, we recently found that the NSO derivatives can also be coupled with uh, this TIPS protected Grignard reagent under nickel catalysis. And again, the use of ICY is essential. And under these conditions, uh, we can uh, introduce an alkyne moiety into a variety of NSO derivatives, such as those bearing uh, OH, acetals, or some nitrogen heterocycles. And also, we recently uh, found that the reductive cleavage of NSO derivatives took place when the reaction was carried out in the absence of a nucleophile. And in this reaction, the use of a new NSC uh, bearing two adamantyl groups uh, performed the best. And the reaction is likely to proceed through the oxidative addition of NSOs followed by beta hydrogen elimination. And these studies provided us an experimental support of oxidative addition process, which has never been verified before experimentally. OK, so the use of ICY gave us another bonus. The CH bond boriration can be catalyzed by nickel. And as you may know, an iridium-based catalyst uh, has been the catalyst of choice for this important process. But recently, many people are trying to develop base metal alternatives such as iron or cobalt. And these studies uh, demonstrated for the first time the potential utility of nickel for CH bond boration reaction. And we are happy uh, to share these important findings with uh, Itami's group in this audience. And they also reported independently that the nickel hospin system can catalyze the CH bond boration reaction. OK, so I have quickly overview our recent findings uh, in the area of strong bond activation. And hopefully, our findings have convinced you that some chemical bonds that have been considered unreactive are, in fact, reactive if we have a right catalyst. And uh, all the works presented today could not, have, could not have been done without the general support uh, by Professor Chatani in particular for sharing his students. And all the experimental works has been done by the graduate students and postdocs listed here. And their creativity and hard work are essential for our research. And uh, I also wish to thank Professor uh, Mori's group at Ibanaki University for our fruitful collaboration in our computational uh, studies. And our research work during these two years was highly stimulated by the people I met in my lectureship tour two years ago. And not only the host professors at each place, but also all the researchers I discussed chemistry with taught me something. And uh, finally, I also wish to thank uh, the people from Banyu Foundation and the committee members of MBLA for providing me these wonderful opportunities. And I truly appreciate uh, their uh, sincere devotion to this great program. And finally, I'd like to thank all of you for your kind attention. <laughs>